I am very proud of the fact that today we can now state that the old adage of more people have walked on the moon than have been to the bottom of the ocean, that is no longer true. <laughs> Two people went down in the Trieste in 1960. Jim Cameron went down in 2012 in the Deep Sea Challenger. In the last three years, we've taken uh, 17 people in the limiting factor to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And the Chinese, I believe, have done four or more people most recently in November with their submersible the, the Fenju. This is just the beginning. And the key facet of all this is reusability. Just like Elon Musk and others have pioneered a reusable spacecraft, this is the first reusable deep ocean vehicle if they can go to the bottom of the ocean. What makes it so special? A lot of different things had to come together to make a fully reusable, full ocean depth submersible. It starts with titanium, very strong, very light, and very expensive. But it's worth it, because it did allow us to have two people go into the capsule, a pilot, and crucially, a scientist or anyone at all who can go down with no special training and experience the deep ocean. But the titanium was key, 10 direct drive thrusters. Why? Because things always fail at full ocean depth, trust me. And you have to have backups. We also had six external batteries. You always need backups. Modems with texting capability, detailed sonar so we can see where we're going. And all of this had to work at pressures of 16,000 pounds per square inch in salt water, which is highly corrosive, and in freezing temperatures. And you're doing it over and over again compressing and relaxing, compressing and relaxing. It's like God's own hammer is trying to destroy this vehicle every time it goes down. But human ingenuity and the wonderful engineers at Triton and other people were able to construct this device which allows us to go down repeatedly. And it's commercially rated. Why is that important? Because we had to build it to standards and design it to standards that would be as safe as a jet airliner so that anyone could go in. Prince Albert himself, who spoke earlier, went down with me to the bottom of the Calypso Deep. So he just climbed right in, and the two of us went down. So he's now the deepest diving head of state, which we're very proud of. But it's also part of a system. And we're talking, I was asked today to talk about the technology of exploration. And it's just not the submersible. It's the support ship, the pressure drop, which has an incredibly powerful mapping sonar. So we could actually identify where we needed to dive. We didn't even know when we started the Five Deeps expedition where four of the deepest points of the ocean were. We actually had to map them and then go. We needed three full ocean depth capable landers that could act as navigation beacons and actually film and capture biological specimens. We needed laboratories for our scientists and we needed enough people to support all this activity. And then of course there was the submersible, the limiting factor which has now done 22 dives beyond 10,000 meters which is a multiple of what any other vehicle has ever done in history. And we have done daily dives to full ocean depth, which never happened before. The real hardcore technology that we had to develop is, we had to develop a navigation system. So over the last three years, we've perfected a three-dimensional navigation system that works all the way at the bottom of the ocean, using landers on the bottom of the ocean to act as a semi-GPS constellation using acoustics rather than radio signals to actually position the submarine underwater as it's moving. And we're able to create maps and also track the landers and the submersible on the bottom as we're diving. It's not just about adventure, although that is a part of it. And it's not, not just about technological development, which is what I'm very passionate about. We have done a great deal of science. I think there have been over 20 peer-reviewed scientific articles from all the dives that we've done, including at Mariana Trench, but also at the Seren and other places. And then there were the archeological dives. I, I'm a former naval veteran and I really wanted to find the Johnston when uh, uh, Robert Kraft and his team saw the first traces that they think they found it. So we went to the open source research and did a lot of intelligence work to find out where the wreck might have gone down. We knew that it was at 6,220 meters, at least the initial wreckage. And then we saw that one little ping on our third dive of a piece of metal at 6,400 meters. And we followed it until there were more pings and then we saw the first major part of wreckage. And then we saw a trench that went down further and further. And because the sub can go unlimited, we kept going down. And sure enough, we spotted on the sonar the pointy bow of the USS Johnston. 
and we were able to locate the deepest wreck in history and positively identify it because a whole number is pretty damn definitive. And what was great about that story was this is a shot from CBS This Morning where they were commenting on the battle that the Johnson fought in, which is a big piece of American history. And the people that actually briefed the story around that table, they said that was the first they'd ever heard of the Johnson or its Medal of Honor winner, Commander Ernest Evans, the first Native American to win the, or be awarded the Medal of Honor in World War II. And they said they never heard the story. And that's part of what we do as explorers, is bringing things to the fore that people should be talking about, the stories, not just new ones, but historical ones as well. And marine archaeology is a big part of that. We've mapped all over the world. We're donating everything that we're mapping to JEBCO's 2030 Seafloor Initiative. This is what we did in 2020 and in 2021, primarily focused on the Pacific. So we continue to go around the world and mapping as much as we can. And this is what we have planned for the remainder of 2021. New technology that we're hoping to develop is actually the deepest side-looking sonar ever invented. Right now, we're limited to 6,000 meters, which covers 98% of the seafloor. That's why it's available. But nothing can go deeper. So we think we have a new technology to put transducers on the limiting factor submersible that will allow it to side scan at a kilometer of width all the way down to nine or even 10,000 meters. This is something we'll be testing in the next six months or so, which hopefully will open up even more areas to get really detailed scans at the bottom of the seafloor. Other things we're developing, new science packages that work at full ocean depth, new media packages so we can see things better and record them in ultra high definition, and also being able to remotely control our sonar when specialists are not on the ship so we can continue our mapping mission. So these are all the things that we're developing technologically to make the oceans more transparent so we can actually understand what we've been missing all these years that lie at the bottom of the seafloor. So thank you very much.